as healthy as you could be? I'm Sarah Kuhn, and I'm on a mission to help you become the best version of yourself, to love yourself right now as you are, to be holy and unapologetically you, to be you. In the summer of 2020, I realized that I had been sick for three out of the last six months. I was overweight, unhappy, and exhausted all the time. I decided that something had to change. So I turned my life upside down and started leaning into a whole foods, plant-based vegan diet. After a month of eating this way, everything changed. I feel so much better, I have way more energy, and I'm a lot happier, a lot less anxious, and a lot less depressed. I wanna share what I've learned with you to help you make those changes as well. All right, so here's all the ingredients that I'm using. Um, you can download the recipe from a link in the video description. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the wet ingredients. All of my mess over here. So you need two separate bowls. Um, we're going to start with the wet ingredients first. And that means we need to start with our flax egg. Okay, so we're gonna start with our flax egg, and how we do that is we take some warm water. Don't know why it's cloudy, that's unfortunate. Um, and then our flax, flax mill, which is that. And we are doing two tablespoons, and this is a teaspoon, so we have to go three times as much. I don't have any tablespoon measuring cups, unfortunately measuring spoons I guess they are okay so there's two tablespoons and then you need six tablespoons of warm water Okay, so once we've got that together, we'll mix it up and then, you, and then you need to let it set for 10 to 15 minutes. And that's what we use as like an egg replacer. Um, and then we're gonna mix everything else from the wet ingredients up. So half a pound of butter or two sticks um, I couldn't find the vegan butter in sticks, so I got one of these. It's 15 ounces, um, so we'll just do a little bit more than half of it. I'm not like a super precise cook, so I just sort of eyeball it. I'm sure sure yours will look a lot less messy than mine does, but then you just put like, a little bit extra. Okay. And then the recipe calls for brown sugar and coconut or turbinado sugar, but I only have organic cane sugar, so we're just going to use that. Um, the only difference is that when you just use organic cane sugar or any kind of just white sugar, um, your cookies won't brown as much as if you use brown sugar. So just know that when you're cooking them. Um, it says three fourths of a cup of each. So that is a cup and a half. So we'll just do three half cups. sort of cream it together. Oh, the other thing about the butter is that you should let it set out because if it's cold, you're not going to be able to cream it together. So the butter that I have has been set out on the counter for um, probably about four hours. So it's really soft. Some people say melt your butter. I don't like it melted. This recipe says melted. 
I actually usually like to put it in a like a KitchenAid mixer or use a hand mixer because it creams it a lot better. But again, I don't have one. So we're just making do. All right, so we're gonna add a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. I have pure vanilla extract, it's not imitation. I'm just gonna borrow the spoon from the eggs. That's actually the end of my, my vanilla. Just enough. The recipe also calls for a fourth of a teaspoon of lemon juice. I don't have any lemon juice, so we're just gonna leave it out. But it does taste a little bit better if you have fresh lemon juice that you can put in. I didn't notice that much of a difference, but there was a little, little bit of a difference. We'll check on our flaxseed egg. It's getting a little bit thicker. I don't know if you can see it a little bit, but it still needs to sit some more. So we'll let it sit there and then we'll put these aside. Okay, so we're gonna mix our dry ingredients now. We're gonna start with a cup and a fourth of flour, which I forgot to pull out. I am using gluten-free flour, but you can use any kind of flour that you want to use. A cup and a fourth. If you use gluten-free flour, make sure that you get the stuff that says cup for cup. Otherwise, you might have to adjust the recipe for it. And it's, it's a cup and a fourth. So that's that. Uh, one teaspoon of salt. And I have pink Himalayan salt. Salt always likes to stick to this thing. It's not very good. Uh, one teaspoon of baking soda. I put mine in a plastic bag just because I don't like it to be open. One of these days I'm going to get some jars. Put everything in jars. It's my, my dream kitchen goal. Okay. And then a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. This is my cinnamon. Which is in its own little plastic bag, but it doesn't zip very well. And it says half a teaspoon. So we'll make sure there's just a half. Okay, and then we'll mix those up. Check on our flax seed again. Oh, I got flour everywhere. It's getting a lot thicker. But I'm gonna let it sit for just another couple of minutes. All right, it's getting pretty thick and it's almost like slimy. That's what you're looking for. So we'll go ahead and pour it in here. I'm going to mix all of this up. And then we're going to start pouring the dry ingredients in there, but we won't do all of it together. We'll do it like in thirds. And you want to mix it together, but you also want to be careful not to over mix it. Because if you over mix it, then your cookies won't be good. Now, I'm, I'm sure you're probably going to ask, like, what does over mixing mean? I'm not a thousand percent sure what over mixing means. So I just tried to mix it like the least amount of possible until it's like just incorporated. 
because after we're done with this, we still have to mix in um, the, um, the oatmeal and the chocolate chips and the pecans as well. Okay, so we'll mix the last part of it in. It doesn't have to be perfect because, like I said, we still have some more stuff to add into it. So, I think that's good enough. So the next step is to add your pecans, and you can spend a whole bunch of time chopping your pecans, or you can just put them in the food processor. Which is what I'm going to All do. Alright, this is going to be a disaster because my food processor got a little bit carried away. So this is more like almond meal rather than almonds. Oh, I'm sorry. Pecans. I don't know why I'm saying almonds. They're pecans. But, yeah, my food processor chopped them up, like, really, really fine. Which I don't suggest that you do. We'll see. There's, like, little ones in here. <laughs> That's really bad. That's, like, really bad. It's a real cooking show. This is like actually happening. I would suggest they be more like this size. More like that. But so yes, if you're going to put them in the food processor, be careful. Be careful that they don't turn out like that. Okay, so after the almonds, we're going to add a half a cup of oats. These are my oats. You can't really see them very well. There they are. Um, gonna add a half a cup of those. And then we're adding two cups of chocolate chips. There's my chocolate chips. And then we are going to mix it up. You should probably use a bigger bowl um, again, I'm working with what I have. I have such limited kitchen supplies right now. It's, it's really, really crazy. Okay, so I thought the dough looked a little bit thin. And I went back and rewatched the video. And I only put a cup and a fourth of flour in. And it's supposed to be two and a fourth. So make note of that. Um, once I put the extra cup in, it looks a whole lot better. So, um, we're going to put the cookies, we're going to put the cookies on the cookie sheet now, again. <clears throat> Once you have the right amount of flour in, um, they actually sit up a lot better. Yes, this is the second time. Second time around of me doing the cookies. But they look a lot better this time. Okay, so now we're going to put them back in, back in the oven. Okay, so here's my toaster oven I was telling you about. See, it's, it's like really, really small. And it's kind of hard to preheat it. But we'll turn it to 300 and turn it on. And in 20 minutes, we'll have cookies. All right, so we're getting ready to pull the cookies out of the oven. And they're a little bit done, but they look good. They look really, really good. So we're gonna let them sit for a couple of minutes just to set up a little bit before we move them to the cooling rack. <laughs> 